Hey there, good morning everybody. Meteorologist Jim Dickey back with another edition of Tropics Talk. Uh, Henri, over and done with, it's uh, dissipated over parts of the Northeast. So now, as we begin uh, the day here, there's no named storms to track in the Atlantic, but there still is plenty to track out there right now. We're in the heart of hurricane season now. Uh, the most active portion of any given hurricane season, history tells us, August 20th through October 10th. Uh, so no surprise to see three areas of interest key, being uh, keyed in on by the National Hurricane Center here, three tropical waves, one in the Central Atlantic, one in the Far Eastern Atlantic, and one in the Caribbean Sea. So let's go through all three. We begin with that wave in the Central Atlantic, which right now looking disorganized, it's tracking to the north and northwest. This is the same area we've been talking about since the weekend when we were watching uh, Fred and Grace. It was the one we were telling you was already tracking northward, was not going to be a threat to the United States. That still looks to be the case. Now, models are pretty bullish on trying to develop this once it gets east of Bermuda this weekend into next week. But again, at that point, it's already well north of Florida's latitude. So I do not think there's any type of threat to Florida, and I think there's very little to suggest that this gets anywhere close to the United States. Outside of interest in Bermuda, uh, this likely is not a threat to any land areas. You see what the uh, various models are doing. Most bring this to the north and then sort of meander it as it gets tossed around uh, by the westerlies, by uh, Atlantic high pressure, but still would have a chance to come together. The uh, GFS model in particular really deepens that system over the central Atlantic next week. So it could take a name, but in all likelihood, this is one that stays over the open Atlantic, remains a fish storm. We jump uh, to the eastern Atlantic, and this one is looking pretty healthy. In fact, of the three tropical waves the Hurricane Center is tracking right now, this one has the most thunderstorm activity associated with it. But that being said, it's also the one that when you look at the models, they have sort of the least confidence in this coming together. This is going to move to the west and northwest. This one also looks like it's going to stay over the uh, open Atlantic, likely stays well north of the Caribbean, well east of the United States. And the Hurricane Center only gives this about a 30% chance for development going through the next couple of days. Keep an eye on it, but uh, again, a low development chance at this point in time. And then the one we'll be watching most closely is the one right now that looks the most disorganized. It's just an open wave of low pressure, really a turn in the winds and some thunderstorm activity in the Eastern Caribbean. But as this works into the Western Caribbean Sea, where conditions are already going to be ideal for low pressure to come together, all indications are low pressure will come together, will consolidate, and we could get a tropical depression or tropical storm to form by the weekend into early next week. And the reason we'll be watching this extra closely is because most models bring whatever forms here into the Gulf of Mexico by the time we get to Sunday and Monday. Uh, two of those models I'll show you here, the European and the GFS, these are isobars, or lines of equal pressure. This is a quick way I like to look at, you know, what the models are saying as far as where a system could be in time. This is 8 a.m. on Monday. And when you look at these isobars, you're looking for sort of a bullseye to form up. And you see right there, in the western Gulf of Mexico, the potential for a pretty strong low to be in place. The European has a weaker system, but very similar location, so pretty good agreement on the models here that there is something in the Gulf of Mexico by early next week. And as we dive into that GFS forecast model, first things first, note how uh, there's high pressure in place over Florida. So if something were to come together here, I do think we're sort of guarded from that, bringing any type of impact here to the Sunshine State. But western portions of the Gulf should be watching this closely, should be sort of on guard as we go through the next couple of days. Here's what the GFS forecast model shows, which of note does tend to develop things a little more quickly than what tends to actually happen in these types of setups. What's going on here, what's called the Central American Gyre, you have your easterly trade winds across uh, the Caribbean Sea, you have westerly winds in the, Car in the uh, eastern parts of the Pacific, south of Central America, that broad counterclockwise flow sort of presents that breeding ground in the Western Caribbean for low pressure area, uh, for low pressure areas to form. We bring in that tropical wave and the pressure deepens on the model as a result. So there you go, you have a closed off low, maybe a depression uh, moving towards the Yucatan, drifts over the Yucatan and once it gets to the Gulf of Mexico, sort of like what we saw with Grace a week ago, conditions will be right for something to really form up and uh, the model depicts in close tropical development close to the coast of Mexico or South Texas going into Monday and Tuesday.
quickly bringing that on shore. So again, something we'll be watching closely, not a threat to Florida, uh, but those uh, on the western end of the Gulf of Mexico should be watching things closely in the coming days. I don't think it's out of the question. We see Ida and Julian form uh, by the time we get uh, to a week from now, by the time we get to next Monday and Tuesday, perhaps even Kate. Again, no surprise. We're in uh, the tail end of August now, late August, early September. Tends to bring uh, lots of activity in the Atlantic. I don't think 2021 is going to be any different. It's been active so far. In all likelihood, the next couple of weeks are going to be pretty busy out there. And anything and everything that forms will be tracking it for you here at ABC7. That includes tonight, Chief Meteorologist John Patrick. He'll be back with an update on ABC7 News at 6, 7, and 11. And I'll be back with more Tropics Talk later on this week as well. Until next time, meteorologist Jim Dickey, have a good day.